So I had a customer call me and his well pump is out and he gave me the information on the well pump and he told me that the well was 550 foot deep and the pump was at 400 feet. So what I'm going to show you here is what I go through before I go ahead and install a new well pump. Now, if you check these two pumps out, they're both three quarter horsepower, but you can tell a considerable difference in the stack. So this right here is a five gallon a minute pump and this here is a 10 gallon a minute pump. Now the smaller pump pumps a higher volume of water, but the lower volume, the five gallon a minute pump has the capabilities of pumping from a deeper depth. So that's why we're gonna install this one. So that one has probably a max working depth of about 280 feet. And this one here will run out somewhere around, I don't know, 415, 420 is when it stops being able to uh, produce enough pressure in order to lift. So I'm going to show you what I do before I install the pump to make sure that we don't go through the whole process of sending it down the hole and we find out, oh, the pump's not good. So let me show you. Now, the way you would do this, because you're dealing with your yard and your well, the wires out at the top of your well, you would have to turn your breaker on and make sure that the two wires that are coming out of the dirt are hot and then you would take your two pump leads and you would just connect them and make sure that the motor and, and the whole pump spun now if it didn't spin it would it would sound like it was locked up in a humming sound but for me i have a 240 volt outlet here and we just take these wires and we stick them in and that's how we test the pump make sure it spins before we ever install it It spins, not meant to be spun on a horizontal horizontal plane, so that's why it sounded so rough. But once you stand it vertically and it runs in the way that it was designed and you fill it full of water, she'll run smooth. I have to put on these Stacons, these lead wire crimps. And what I like to do, I like to twist my wires. You can see that those are twisted. And then I like to cut them to the length that is needed. They don't need to be any longer than that because that will help when you go to make your waterproof connection and make this uh, connection waterproof. The second thing I like to do, because we are going at 400 feet and the amount of head pressure on this pump could reach upwards of 200 PSI because you're looking at 400 feet in the ground. So if you were to ever drain the well completely dry, then the pressure right here on top of this head can be 200 PSI. So what I like to do, I like to take a brass check valve and a stainless steel male nipple. And, I, and even though the pump already has a built-in check valve, it's plastic. So we're going to go ahead and put on this brass Simmons check valve here as a secondary help. So here we are out here putting this pump in and it starts all the way at the corner of that fence. It follows all the way around. And it goes way over to the other fence. That is 380 feet. So due to the depth of this pump, we're going to go ahead and use this check valve with a stainless steel. With the stainless steel male and two stainless steel pipe clamps. And if you notice how my wires lay flat and even, we're going to go ahead and tape them up accordingly. And what that allows, that allows not not for it not to be so twisted and then it would uh, basically give it a higher chance of rubbing in the well so try to keep things as straight and organized and streamlined as possible I'm gonna go ahead now and use my rubberized tape which is here you can find this on Amazon and I'm gonna cut about six three six inch strips and wrap this that will waterproof our connections so I got my three six inch strips. If you notice, this has a blue backing. The blue backing actually comes off. I like to lay it out in the sun like this to where it gets a little hot. And as you apply it, you're gonna allow it to stretch just slightly and double wrap and overlap itself.
Now I just repeat the process with the other two. So keeping the wires flat, you don't want to put too much tension on them. You don't want them to try to separate your, uh, your wire connection. But you want to make sure that they're all flat. So I like to put one wrap of tape right here behind the splice just to hold it. And if need be, I can pull it one way or pull it the other way. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here to the head of the pump, keeping all my wires flat. You're going to want to make sure that your uh, stainless steel clamps here, the heads or any of the band isn't over here near the wire because you don't want the clamp itself to actually cut into the wire. So we're going to tape this all up nice and full. And there's no such thing as too much tape. I'll cover the clamps. That helps protect them from the environment of the water. And then I'm going to candy cane. Keeping my wires flattened together. All the way up and across my splice. Get over here to the splice, pull the tape a little bit, stretch it, make it tight, and then cover it. Cover the entirety of your wire splice nice and full, and then do another second pass. This gives a little bit of extra protection. And then I'm going to go all the way down the full length of the pipe, and I'm going to do three to four wraps, break it and continue every two feet all the way the full length of this 380 feet of pipe so this is where i'm starting and i've got a long ways to go and still all the way around so the reason why we're here today we're actually hydrofracting the well on the other side of the garage they've had uh, consistent problems with running out of water um don't really know what the issue is yet there's been so many companies out here so we're basically starting from scratch we're gonna ditch the pump that they had in there they had a one horsepower five in there which was correct but they had it at 450 feet which this pipe is only 160 psi pipe it's not rated for that depth so theoretically 160 psi pipe shouldn't be put in the well any more than about 360 feet so that's pretty close to where we're, we're going back with it but we are going back with another five gallon a minute pump the typical lifespan of a deep set pump like this is about seven years so the one that they had in there is a 2014 model so we're going to go ahead and update it and the wire that they had um, it was done correctly it was just wire that was probably 15 to 20 years old and it had five splices in it and a dozen rub spots so we went ahead and just ditched the wire because that's way too many splices to be doing this much work and having to put a pump in at 400 feet and then say oh it's not working pull it back out and then we're going to start this process here so we went ahead and decided we'd put new pump and new wire on and shorten the total length a little bit less than their 450 because even though the pump was set at 450 the pump didn't have the ability to lift water from that depth so it would pump it down to say 380 foot and then the pump would just sit there and spin and it didn't have enough umph to lift that water anymore so there's no need to have a pump that deep if it can't function at that depth i'm going to go ahead now and start taping and i'll show you the finished product when i'm done another important aspect if you notice 
the wire is below the pipe as I tape it. That is very important. You want the wire below the pipe as you tape because the pipe itself has this arch in it. And if you were to put the wire on top of the pipe, when you bend the pipe straight, then you're left with a hump in your wire. Now, when the pipe is straight, you'll notice, see how nice and taut that wire is up against that? So you want to keep your wire on the bottom side of the pipe, just like I'm doing here, and go every two feet and put three or four wraps of tape and then continue. So we've got it all taped up all the way. You see I have one tape here in my hand. Let me zoom out a little bit. Then another one. And another one, the wire, keeping the wire on the bottom. And another one, and another one, and another one. All the way the full length of roughly 400 feet. Now it's time to put the well seal on. And due to the depth, I do not recommend using a plastic PVC or a plastic ABS well seal. Now if you're in an area where you have a pitless adapter, I would recommend using a stainless steel or a brass fitting into your pitless adapter. Here I'm going to use a solid steel one piece well seal and a, uh, a brass elbow up top supporting it with two clamps. Well, we've got it all wrapped up. The homeowner came out, so I wanted to stop recording while they were around. And uh, about to pack everything up and head on back home. Thank y'all for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you enjoyed these videos, hit that subscribe button. Take care.